Hello, my name is Tara and I work for Vestavia Hills Library in the Forest. In today's video, I will be showing you how to make a mask. With COVID still affecting our lives today, many of us still have to wear a mask in order to prevent the spread of the disease. However, masks that you can buy from the store oftentimes are expensive and can be very wasteful. Because of this, many people have actually started to make their own masks. So for this video, I'm going to show three different ways on how to make a mask. The first way by using a sewing machine, the second by hand stitching, and the third with no sewing at all. Before I get started with this video, I want to say a bit of a disclaimer. As of editing this video, if you live in the United States, a lot of states have started to lift their mask orders, including Alabama, which will be lifted on April the 9th. When I recorded the video back in January, I didn't know the mask order would be lifted so soon. Though this video may a bit little too late, I hope that the techniques featured in this video are helpful for those that want to make a mask. Now that that disclaimer is out of the way, let's get started. For this video, the mask that I will show today is the type of mask that I found is best overall, which you can see here. It uses the least amount of fabric, doesn't require any pleating or folding of the fabric like you see on medical masks, and doesn't require a nose piece. The top and bottom V section that you see on this pattern is meant for the nose and chin. As you can see here, I created a pattern with three different sizes that has a 1 4th inch seam allowance. A link to this pattern is in the description below. If you are not sure which size is best for you, I recommend printing out this pattern and cutting on the solid lines and tape the top and bottom V-shaped sections together. Hold each mask to your face until you find the size that is perfect for you. This pattern will be used for the sewing machine mask and the hand sewn mask. If you want to skip ahead to the type of mask that you are wanting to create from this video, the timestamps are in the description below. At the beginning of each section, I will show the supplies needed for each mask. For the sewing machine mask, you will need the following supplies. A pattern, a sewing machine, fabric, string, a paper clip, elastic or a long hair band, scissors, a marker, small kids beads or rubber hair ties, and a ruler. To get started with the sewing machine mask, you'll take your scissors and cut out your pattern along the dashed lines. Next, place your cutout pattern onto the fabric and while using your marker, trace around the pattern onto the fabric. For this mask, you'll need two pieces of fabric cut to this pattern shape. After you've cut out your fabric, you'll take one of the pieces and fold it in half widthwise, making sure to have the wrong side of the fabric facing out. Next, you will need to sew the V-shaped sections closed, one at the top and one at the bottom. Using your sewing machine, you will take the piece of fabric you have just folded in half and sew the top V-shaped section together with a 1 4th inch seam allowance, making sure to backstitch locking the seam in place. You will repeat this step for the bottom V-shaped section as well, cutting out any excess string with your scissors. You will repeat this step for the second piece of fabric as well. After you have sewn the V-shaped sections on both pieces, you will align the two pieces of fabric together along the top and bottom edge, making sure to have the wrong side of the fabric facing out, as I have shown here. Then, using your sewing machine, sew along the top and bottom of the mask, making sure to backstitch on the ends and cut off any extra string. Next, you will need to invert the mask to the correct side. At this stage, your inverted mask should look like this, sewn along the top and the bottom and open on the sides. Before you can sew the sides closed, you will need to cut two pieces of elastic that are 10 inches long. While working on one side of the mask, you will invert the fabric back into the mask about 1 4th inch as I have shown here. Then, you'll place one of the pieces of elastic into this opening along the top. While holding this piece of elastic in place, place this corner of fabric under the sewing machine, making sure to have the elastic under the foot as well. And make sure to have a 1 4th inch seam allowance while working. Next, you will sew this piece of elastic in place, making sure to backstitch, but make sure to leave an opening for the other end of elastic. While keeping the sewing machine foot down on the fabric and before inserting the other end of elastic into this opening, you will need to place it in making sure that it is not twisted. You will sew this end of elastic into place. Next, we will need to sew along the bottom of the mask. Lift the foot and rotate the fabric 90 degrees. Lower the sewing machine foot and sew along the bottom edge, stopping about an inch and a half away from the end. Next, while the fabric is still on the sewing machine, 
invert this end of the mask 1 4 inch back into the inside. You will then place the other piece of elastic into this opening next to the edge that we're currently sewing. Once you have this piece of elastic in place, finish sewing along the edge and stop 1 4 inch before the end of the mask. Next, we'll need to rotate the mask to sew along this edge and sew half of the side closed before inserting the other end of elastic into place and finish sewing this edge closed. Next, we'll rotate the mask one more time, repeating the steps to rotate it and sew along this final edge of the mask. After you have taken your mask off of the sewing machine, your mask should look like this. The next step that I'm about to show you is optional. For your mask straps, you can just simply tie them into a knot to fit your ears. However, if you want the size to be adjustable, you can add kids jewelry beads to these straps. To do this, take your paper clip and fold it into a sharp V shape. Thread this paper clip onto the elastic strap, making it look like a sewing needle. On the opened end of the paper clip, place a jewelry bead onto it and pull it down onto the elastic, which should now look like this. You will repeat this step for the second piece of the elastic strap. And there you have it. You have now made a mask using a sewn machine. For the hand sewn mask you will need the following supplies. A pattern, fabric, string, a sewing needle, a paper clip, elastic or a long hair band, scissors, a marker, small kids beads or rubber hair ties, and a ruler. Before I get started on the hand sewn mask, I wanted to mention that a lot of the instructions in this part of the video are similar to the sewing machine mask. Where you would use a sewing machine, we're now going to use a sewing needle and thread. The stitching method that I'm using in this video is called the running stitch to where you'll wiggle the needle back and forth through the fabric, creating a dashed line with the string. To get started, cut out your pattern along the dashed lines. Using a marker, trace this pattern onto two pieces of fabric and cut them out. Take your first piece of fabric and fold it in half, making sure to have the wrong side facing out. Next, we need to sew the top and bottom V sections closed. Take your sewing needle and add enough string so that it is manageable while working. You'll need to add more string as you work on your mask. To get started, I'm going to sew the top V section closed, sewing a line that is 1 4 inch away from the edge, and tying knots at the beginning and end of this line. You'll then repeat sewing this line along the bottom V shaped section. You will repeat this entire step for the other piece of fabric. Next, we will need to sew both of these pieces of fabric together along the top and bottom edge. Align both of these pieces of fabric together, making sure that the wrong side is facing out on each side. Take your thread and needle and sew a line that is 1 4 inch away from the edge, tying knots at the beginning and end of this line. You will then repeat this step for the bottom edge of the mask. Next, on both sides of the mask, you'll invert the fabric back into the inside going 1 4 inch. Next, you'll take your elastic and cut two pieces that are 10 inches long. Working on one side at a time, Place one piece of elastic into the opening along the top part. Using your sewing needle and thread, stitch this into place and tie it off with a knot. Next, insert the other end of the elastic into the opening, making sure that it's not twisted and stitch this into place. To close off the opening on this side, stitch a line along this side 1 4 inch away from the edge and make sure to tie knots at the beginning and end. For the other side of the mask, you will repeat this entire step. 
The next step that I'm about to show you is optional. For your mask straps, you can just simply tie them into a knot to fit your ears. However, if you want the size to be adjustable, you can add kids' jewelry beads to these straps. To do this, take your paper clip and fold it into a sharp V shape. Thread this paper clip onto the elastic strap, making it look like a sewing needle. On the opened end of the paper clip, place a jewelry bead onto it and pull it down onto the elastic, which should now look like this. And there you have it. You've now created a mask using hand sewing techniques with adjustable straps. For the no sew mask, you'll need the following supplies. An old t-shirt, scissors, marker, and a ruler. Before I get started on the no sew mask, I wanted to mention that t-shirt fabric is stretchy, so the size I have featured in this video is what fit me. To find the perfect size for your mask, I recommend cutting off a 1 inch strip of fabric and stretch it across your face, from ear to ear to get the width, and from above your nose to below your chin to get the height of your mask. For my mask, it was 10 inches wide by 5 inches tall. To get started, you will take an old t-shirt and lay it flat on your table. Using your marker and ruler, draw a rectangle that is the size of your mask that you want. Using your scissors, cut through both layers of fabric. Next, while keeping the two layers of fabric together, fold it lengthwise as I have shown here. Next, you will take your marker and draw two lines, one on each side, that is an inch and a half long and is about one finger width away from the edge and cut with your scissors through both layers of fabric. Next, you will unfold your fabric from the previous step. It's at this point that if you want to clean up the fabric's final appearance, you can take your scissors and trim along the edges. After this, you are now left with a finished mask that required no sewing at all. I hope that you're able to use the techniques that I featured in this video for future projects. Thank you everyone for watching and have a great day.